Assalamu alaikum. You've just caught your spouse cheating. What do you do? Well, I can tell you it's a very difficult moment because you probably are very upset, extremely sad, and at times shocked and in disbelief. Emotions are running high. Sometimes there might be yelling and screaming happening because of that disbelief. Try and calm yourself down. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Calm down. Don't make decisions. Don't make decisions while your emotions are running high and you're angry, you're upset. Don't make decisions during those moments. Calm down. Give it a moment. Sit down. Relax. May Allah make it easy. Now, what should you do? You need to ask yourself a few questions. What exactly did they do? Look at the magnitude of the cheating. Because cheating is not all on one level. I mean, a person who has just sent SMSs or messages to someone is very different from a person who regularly met up in order to commit the sin of adultery or whatever else it may have been, the physical intimacy. These are very different levels. So it depends what exactly they did, what you can prove beyond doubt. If something is doubtful, give them the benefit of your doubt, that's your spouse. But if something is proven beyond doubt, it's there. If it is on the highest level, then you need to look at what type of a spouse this person is. The cheater, the one who cheated. Is he generally a good person? And if it's a female, is she generally a good person? A brilliant person who fulfills the rights who actually has a good relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well, whose character and conduct is beautiful, they've sacrificed for you and they've made a mistake. Subhanallah. If that is the case, consider that perhaps Allah exposed the sin of theirs early in the day in order to make them stop what they were doing through his mercy. He did not want them to continue. So out of his love for them, he exposed them right at the beginning and they were caught. And when they were caught, everything stopped. And when it stopped, it's the time to seek forgiveness and earn the pleasure of Allah. Had they not been caught, it would have carried on and the sin would have been perhaps taken to other levels. So consider the fact when you do catch your spouse cheating, depending on the level of cheating, if the spouse is generally a good person, it could have just been the mercy of Allah exposing that weakness or that sin to you so that you can raise it and that sin can stop and it's no longer committed because Allah loves the person. Like I said, had it not been exposed, perhaps it would have continued. Consider that. So in that case, I would not recommend that you broke the marriage or just ended it or said, right, I'm going home. People will advise you in some cultures. They don't give people a second chance. I'm telling you, good people also make mistakes. That's why I say, take a look at what magnitude of cheating it was and take a look at what type of a person it is. Who is this person? Are they really uh, decent? Are they good? You know, are they worth being the mother or father of your children? Are they worth actually being your spouse? They faltered. Okay, you know what? Good people do make mistakes. Perhaps it was the mercy of Allah. So don't come and invoke the punishment now of Allah by making decisions that would really not be worth your while or your children or your families. You might regret that decision. Some friends are such that when they hear about a little bit of cheating, perhaps, like I said, there are different levels. They'll tell you, that's it, end it, go home, you'll find someone else, you are worth much more than this, you know, you can't allow this to happen and so on. And little do they know that a year or two down the line, that spouse would be happily married to someone else and you're busy sitting here licking your wounds because someone gave you wrong advice. So I'm here to tell you, think before you make decisions. I'm not belittling the fact that cheating is unacceptable completely. Like I said, emotions will run high. You're a human. And sometimes we do some silly things when we catch our own, you know, friends or anyone, uh, family members doing something bad. What about a spouse cheating? May Allah forgive us. May Allah strengthen us and grant us the ability to fulfill whatever we want in a halal way. I mean, so my brothers and sisters, remember, when you're making a decision, consider all of these factors. Now, if 
they had a habit and if this thing went right to the end and it was proven beyond doubt and the person involved is a spouse who doesn't fulfill their rights, no character conduct, you know, the level of it is extremely low, they're abusive, they're emotionally draining and really they're not a pleasure to live with at all. Then perhaps it's a sign from Allah to say, you know what, walk out. That's what it should be, walk out. And as for the cheater, my beloved brother or sister, don't ever blame your spouse for your wrong actions. People actually have the audacity to come up and say, well, I did this because you don't show me enough love. I did this because you uh, don't spend time with me. I did this because you are not there for me and so on. All those are problems I do agree need addressing, but they do not justify your sin. That's what it is. They do not justify what you've just done. So they might or whatever you've mentioned. Yes, it may be a problem that you should have raised before and dealt with it, but doesn't justify what you've just done. So one of the worst things to deal with is a, a thief who's justifying the robbery. Come on, man. You know, a, a perpetrator who's justifying the adultery. No, no, no. You know, people say you must apologize. Number one, seek forgiveness of Allah. Seek forgiveness of Allah. Number two is apologize without being asked to apologize. You know, I believe when someone demands an apology and you give that apology, it's hypocritical in a lot of cases because they didn't want to give it. But you said, I want an apology. So you write an apology or you give an apology. They could just say, I'm sorry. They're not sorry because you've asked them to say sorry. That's why they said it. A true apology is that which comes without it being asked. It came from the heart of the individual. If they're remorseful, if they're apologizing, if they're good, if they're if the sin they've committed is on a level that is forgivable. Subhanallah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. You know what? I know of people who've forgiven and their relationships thereafter have become much stronger not just among them, but even with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why it's important for family members, extended family members. If your child had a cheating spouse and they want to get back to that cheating spouse after they have made amends and reconciled, please support them, support them. Good people also make mistakes at times. Good people also make mistakes at times. Obviously, I've addressed it well. I've actually said it all depends on the person as well as the magnitude of the sin. And it also depends on whom that sin was committed with. Sometimes it's too close for comfort. Sometimes it's unforgivable, man. How could you do this with someone who's so close? So it depends. Now, in the eyes of Allah, there is no sin that is unforgivable. Even shirk, if you seek forgiveness of it while you're alive, you're forgiven. That's clear.